Hey guys, Mr. Burns here. Um, I'm going to be talking to you about some of the stuff that's in section 8.2. Um, we talked about this a little bit in class, and uh, we'll build on it after Easter, but uh, what section 8.2 is about is chord properties. So there's in your book, there's three properties of chords. But they're all very similar. Okay, They just sort of start with a different premise. So what we have is right here, we have a chord going through the circle, and a chord is just something that touches two points, sort of the different, uh, the, I don't, know, I don't want to call it the opposite of a tangent, but it's, uh, it's different from the tangent because the tangent only touches one point. So a chord touches two, and the best example of a chord is the diameter. A diameter going through the center is a, is a special case of a chord. Um, so if we have a uh, chord anywhere in a circle, I could have drew this anywhere, and we take a, uh, a line coming from the center, or a radius, whatever you want to call it, and intersect the chord at a right angle. So I'm going to try my best to do that at a right angle, right there. So I just did that. Oops. I intersect at a right angle. What ends up happening is I divide this chord here into two equal parts. Okay? <clears throat> I divide it into two equal parts. So I divided this into two equal parts. So what that means is this radius perpendicularly bisected this chord. Okay, so perpendicularly bisected. Bisected just means to divide something into two equal parts. Okay, bisected means divide something into two equal parts. Like this, this length is the same as this length. So this is really, um, the book gives you three different properties. But I think if you know this diagram, um, you understand what's going on here, but these are two equal parts. you got a right angle here, then you can apply it to any situation. The only difference between the properties in the book are you start off with a different, uh, sort of a different premise, and you reach the same conclusion. You reach this diagram. So if you want to have a look at the book, it's in the book. Um, but again, know this diagram, and you will be fine, I think. All right, let's have a look at some specific examples. All right, so we got a few things going on here. Um, you can see we got a radius here. We also have a line coming from the center going to this chord right here, okay? And it intersects at a right angle. So, uh, line coming from the center hits a chord at a right angle. We know that bisects the chord, okay? So, what we can say is that this line is equal to this line. Well, we know this line here from the right angle to the side is 6. We're looking for this line here, x, we'll call it, um, from the center of the, or side of the circle to the center of the, the right angle. Okay, So these two things are equal. So in that case, uh, we know x is equal to 6. Okay, Very simple. Great multiple choice question. All you had to do was know this diagram. Okay. A line coming from the center, intersecting a chord at a right angle, bisects the chord. Okay, that property. Okay, very, very important. All right, let's try another example. Let's see. <clears throat> we got uh, a couple things going on here. We got a diameter here. This entire length is 31.8. Um, we got this side length right here is 7. And this is x, and this is 14.3 here from this right angle to, to over here. So we can say a couple of things here, and we might not need these things, but just to illustrate the idea. So we have uh, a line coming from the center that, that hits the chord at a right angle. We know it bisects the chord, so these two things are equal. Now that's not particularly useful for us here, but it still helps us out a little bit. We also know that this line right, this from this dot all the way here, is a radius, okay? So it's a radius. So we know that half the diameter here, 31.8, uh, 31 so if we go um, 31.8 divided by 2, we're going to get, um, we're going to get a radius. So 31.8 divided by 2, is equal to 
<clears throat> so that's that's my radius, and I'll maybe I'll say that that's equal to my radius. I still haven't gotten the hang of using this pen tablet. Uh, I eventually will, I'm sure. So that's my radius. Well, that same radius is equal to this, and that radius here is seven plus x. Okay, so we got a little mini equation here if you want to think of it like that. Fifteen point nine is equal to 7 plus x, because they're both radiuses. So really, if we just want to find x, all we had to do was go um, 15.9, subtract 7, and that gives us 8.9. Okay, so hopefully that's fairly clear to you guys um, with that problem. There wasn't a lot of, uh, you know, chord property used there, but still, you got some chords going on there, so you got to understand exactly what's going on. All right, let's try one more example, and uh, maybe this one's a little bit trickier. All right, so we've got a couple things going on here. we got a chord going across the circle here, right across here. Um, we've got a line coming from the center, intersecting the chord at a right angle. These two things are equal. So if this is 8.3, this is also 8.3. Okay, and we also have a right triangle here. We're trying to find x. Okay, and that x happens to be also happens to be a radius from the center to the edge of the circle. So it happens to also be the hypotenuse. So what we need to do is find x. So we're going to use Pythagorean theorem. So again, Pythagorean theorem, very important for this unit. So x squared is equal to 4.4 .4 squared plus 8.3 squared, and that, of course, is equal to, still got our x squared there, so 4.4, 4.4 .4, 4 times 4.4, we've only got 12 minutes left, better hurry up, 19.36, uh, plus 8.3 times 8.3, and that is equal to uh, 68.89. And then we have x squared is equal to, well, I had those two things together, so I got plus 19.36. It's equal to 88.25. <clears throat> Excuse me again. It's flu. 88.25. So I know x is equal to the square root of 88.25. And I want to get a you know a closer answer than just estimating. So I go square root. And that's going to be equal to, I'll call it 9.4. x is equal to about 9.4. So there you go. That's how we can use our chord properties, and you're just going to run into a lot of right triangles again with section 8.2. So you got to be ready for Pythagorean theorem. Again, look at my review. You'll see Pythagorean theorem. Uh, hopefully that gives you a third off review. If you need some extra practice problems, come see me after school or ask me during class. Good luck with your studies. I'll see you guys in class.